gonna put the gauges back on. Well, I like to put the fill assembly in first. Okay, you gotta inspect the shaft on this uh, fill check valve. Make sure the O-ring's good. All right. There's always a schematic that tells you what size this is. A little bit. And what? I got the other thing. All right, there's another small one here. It's 11 by something. Anyway, schematic will tell you the right size. <laughs> Go by the schematic. Don't do what I say, but. You know, make sure it's lubed here. I don't think this is a little crescent. Right What's going in is your gauges next. Make sure when you took it out, this should have been uh, verified uh, Dalaran seats is on the front and the reg side. You know, if you had it out before, you should have marked if it does. If you check your reg gauge before, it's pretty accurate. You want to mix them up. You want to keep your verified good gauge on the reg side. And you need one of those modified open-end 11 inch, 11 mil wrench to get in here, because it's kind of narrow. Next is your power wheel. Let's see if you can get it here. There's the wheel. Yeah, all these pieces. main transfer port hole right and this is your various size transfer port hole the control high medium and low if it's labeled that way if not it is labeled in caliber but all right this o-rings already changed there's two o-rings here usually there's two o-rings this power wheel is six by two mil right here there's two of them to seal the pressure between the transfer port. And there's uh, one here. It's 11.1 uh, by 1.6 on that side. You kind of lube it. All right, because the inner sleeve has to go in there. All right. So when you look through there, all right, a little smaller. Oh, how it goes. This set screw mark here has to be from the top of the action. There's a set screw right there. It keeps the transfer port vertical. Perfectly aligned from the barrel to the action. And what, uh, so this, the wheel goes on this side, you turn it, it covers up the main hole and blocks it with a little small, low hole, uh, the smallest transport hole. And you rotate it again, and it goes to the next bigger hole, all right? Until you get the actually the 30 cal or the highest setting, and it's perfectly aligned with the actual 
diameter of the highest setting. Actual transport hole is perfectly big, all right? That's your maximum flow. Now when it goes in, this divot has to align with this set screw on top. So you put one of these set screw here, get it, get it ready. Uh, not ready, but I need to see down there. I want to see the divot right on top of that set screw hole here. So it goes in like this. There's the divot. So align it on this set screw hole when it goes slides in. You kind of, you know, while you're pushing in, you go left and right. So you want the O-ring to go in there and compress and go in there nicely, not without damaging it. Like that. Now, you're gonna need to look through this hole and find where that divot's at. And to rotate it, just grab this piece here. Uh, this half moon, I need to rotate it to like look for it. And yeah. Now, it's perfectly aligned with this hole where that divot's at. So you need to lock it in place. It's critical, this needs to be locked in place. If it's not, you forget about this, the main transfer hole that's fixed to make it work right is gonna misalign. You're gonna block the main transport this way, and it's not gonna work. There'll be no air coming out of it. So it's critical to set it. And it's, that's why the set screw is there for. I kinda lightly seat it. Then I'm trying to rotate it. You can rotate this, but I want to see if this rotates and stays in place. I'm not rotating with this other nut back here. So it doesn't rotate lightly, tighten it more. It stays in place, doesn't rotate, then you tighten it down. Not too tight, because you have another set screw right on top of that one, making sure it doesn't back out. And lightly, and that screw is now come out. All right, and verify you're rotating the transfer port, and this inner barrel here is not moving with it. All right. Now, you know, since it is a bearing and a spring. This will give you this clicking noise and setting it up to perfectly aligned transfer port. It gives you the clicking. So what goes in there, you could drop it straight in there, that hole where the set screw goes. I like to loop that bearing. Just drop in a hole. It already fell in. Now I put the spring on top. push it down. Earlier while we were working, I seen that set screw fall down. Now, since there's a spring there, it controls how much tension that bolt bearing, you know, provide tension on that shaft of the power wheel. So you have to adjust it. If you just crank on it, you can't rotate the power wheel. You will get a nice click on it. Anyway, before you do that, we're gonna put this wheel on. Usually, when you had this off before, there's a set screw right in the bottom. It was sitting at the load part. There's a little divot where it was before sitting. Just put it back like that. And it was sitting on high. Lock it down. A little tight, I mean, not too tight. That's enough. Now, 
I believe it's a bigger set screw here. And, and when you feel the spring tension, test out the wheel. You hear a little click. Yeah. And sometimes it's too tight, depends how strong your finger is. You can control how much tension it is. As long as a click and stops in the position where you want it, you know, 30 cal. That 30 cal means in high, all right, low, you know, this low, medium, and high. But if you want power level, <laughs> the, me, I don't go by the power rating. I just go by the speed. I want to get the highest setting up put in a high. If I, 177, if you want to go higher than 177, 22, I usually go to a high. Depends on what speed, the target speed, what you're going for. All right. If you want to save on shot count, you always go to lowest transport opening as much as you can without, you know, getting the speed too low. You have to set it the way you want the speed, I mean. That's how you adjust a power wheel, what speed you want to go. Set it. All right. Machine operating. Now what's left is your barrel. I mean, before that, I like to test it out. Usually, I don't put the stock on because I want to put the power wheel here and just the power. So let's put the power wheel on. Power wheel is always two springs here, right there. And usually I put the silicone on top of it. It's going from falling out sometime. Then, power wheel, make sure your ball bearing is still there. And when you, put, when you slide on top, make sure the slide bar is all the way back because it, if you're going to put it in max, this cam sticks out pretty far. It's going to hit this, this adjustment screw. So it needs all the way back. Max, minimum. Right there. Max, minimum. Make sure the ball bearings are seated. You can push down on it and rotate it, it's okay. Then you put your screw back on. There it is. I'm doing this because I want to test, set the velocity, all right? Because I want to adjust this, I want to fine tune adjustment screw to set my velocity at max. Then I, uh, that's making sure the preferred speed I want to set is on max. And you can fine tune it to fall there by adjusting this slide bar. So I know it's on max. It's saying you want to shoot 18 grain 880, I'll set the max on 880, then work and control the velocity down. Okay, you don't want. Sometimes you overpower it, your 80s max here, the more you crank on it, it doesn't go any faster and you're wasting a lot of air. So make sure your speed is set on max, preferred speed. All right. Then we'll put the barrel on. Well, let's put the barrel on. We're going to pressurize it. Test for leaks. You lightly pressurize it and kind of have your finger here by the vent hole or the regular. Just in case it leaks, you just back it off. Watch the gauge. Oh, let's protect my eyes when you pressurize things. You're, when you hear that sound, I mean the seals uh, are, are you know, shoved in a corner and sealed. And you see the pressure on the, on the gauges. All right. Usually I go to the crony. I start up, you start out with the lower reg pressure. Let's say right now your reg pressure is at, uh, let's say, 
130. I want to set it at 110. All right, easily uh, vent it. And back off an adjustment screw a little bit to bleed it. While it's bleeding, I crank it in about a half a turn, then hurry up and shut the valve. I mean, pressurize the bottle without, so you don't waste too much air. So right now is a good starting point. You always start low, work yourself up. It's about 105 bars. All right. All right, when you do your testing, you want to keep your transfer port the maximum opening. Your maximum on your hamstring adjuster is on max. Then there's a 105 bar and you shoot through the crony. If the velocity is low, right, you need to increase your reg pressure by five bar at a time till you get your speed where you want it. Usually I set about 10 feet per second higher what the speed I wanted. All right, this way you, you, you got the bare minimum rake pressure to get your speed. So you'll be more consistent and get your best shot count and accuracy. All right, so when you got everything set, then you could uh, remove your power wheel. Then we'll put the stock on. Make sure because the bulb bearing it sticks out, it's now going to go past the stock. So, bulb bearing here, spring here, one spring is in there. So, it's all right. Let's flip it over. Always align the gauges first. Eyeball both of them because it's easy to knock those uh, plastic lens on the gauges. So, align them first. Then it's stuck. Screws on. Now we can put the power wheel back on. One spring. Both balls, Got max on high. As you notice, your slide bar is in the way again. Always push that to the left. Now we got now we can put our safety on. Now the safety has a slot. It goes in like male female slot, right? Make sure they're aligned together. Don't over tighten this because it sits on the O ring, give you the proper tension. Just, uh, just kind of cycle it. If it feels good, it doesn't wiggle, too much play, it's perfect. Now it's time to set it. Well, make sure safety works. Cock it, put it on safe, try and pull the trigger. It doesn't release, put it back to fire. So do this a couple of times, make sure it does cycle on safe and doesn't fire. All right, now put the barrel on. When you slide it in, well, you should have kept the screws in the same position, so it should have been like that. Usually this set screw here is not meant to really, you know, crank on the brass here. All right, you don't really crank it on there. 
they're not really meant to be tightened down. This is a plug. All right. Make sure the slot. When you're when you're going in there, you'll see the divot where the set screw is sitting. Kind of align that. When you when you're almost all the way in, go back here. Make sure the brass transfer port goes in the slot. All right. And make sure the shoulder of the brass piece is flush with the body, not the lip where the mag goes, but the next brass piece on OD part is flush. If it's not flush, the magazine is going to hit that and then the magazine won't go in. All right. Then always tighten down the middle first. Front. That's it. Now keep this flush or was it for? If you've tested, you feel a little air blowing by, you just kind of put blue lock uh, thread seal in it and close it back down and lightly sit on the brass piece and that's it. And you test it again after it, it cures. All right. And she's ready to go for testing. Leak tests. You want to do a leak test after testing, you mark the gauges. And let it sit overnight. Make sure, when I do my tests overnight, I kind of mark the gauge on the reg side and make sure it doesn't creep up. And the, the supply side, make sure overall there's no leak. And let it sit overnight. It shouldn't be, oh. Key is it doesn't leak and the gauge is going to stay where it was. Then happy shooting. All right, this includes this topic. And thanks for watching FX Masterclass, and we'll catch you next time. If you got any questions, leave your comment down below, and we'll see you in the next video.